What's going on guys, Mike here, AX Garage, and I got John right behind me. In today's video, uh, we'll be prepping a few cars they'll be taking up to the Tell the Dragon. Now John, tell us more about this event we'll be attending. So this is going to be our third year in a row going. Um, there is an event on Saturday and Sunday, and it's Classic Hondas on the Dragon, I believe it is. And what it is, it's just a Honda meet up in the area of the Tail of the Dragon. Um, it's in Tennessee, North Carolina area. It's Route 129, and there's a bunch of really great driving up there. Mountain time, right before the winter hits in October. And it's just beautiful time. Bunch of like-minded people getting together, enjoying their cars, enjoying some great driving. And we've had an awesome time with it. And this year, we're going back again. Being as my hatch isn't ready, um, because a good build takes some time. I'm taking the Integra back up again this year. So in preparation for that, we got to do some work on the car, make sure it's ready to go for all the abuse we're going to give it. So we're going to do uh, flush on the brake fluid. I'm running Mole Tool 660. It does have a service interval that's pretty short. It's about one year. So I'm going to flush the fluid out and put some new stuff in there. I'm going to change the transmission fluid, do an oil change, and then also we have some other modifications to the car, starting with the interior. We have the Type S steering wheel that's going on. It's just like the A-Spec one, except it's perforated on there, so it give you a little bit better grip. I have a new shift knob that we're gonna put on there, and also a little bit of chassis tuning with the RV6 rear sway bar. Really nice piece. We put on a few other guys' cars, and I, that's the one thing I want. I want a little bit more stiffness out of the car. It's a heavy car. When you throw it into a turn, it gets a pretty good amount of body roll. I'm hoping this will tighten it up a little bit. So that's what we got on the plan for my car. We got a bunch more going on on the other cars as well, but I get to start first because the other people, they're not as important as me. All right, so here's the sway bar. It's pretty simple. It may look pretty tiny, but you'll see when it goes, gets on the car how it works. These are the new billet mounting brackets for it. It comes with new hardware, lubricant for getting everything into place, and new D bushings to hold it. This is the optional billet end links that come with it. They're really nice. It, they're all spherical and it doesn't utilize the factory ones. You can get the same kit and use the factory ones or you can use their upgraded billet ones. So the sway bar itself has three different settings. As you move in, it gets a little bit stiffer, a little bit stiffer. So we'll put it on the car. We'll find a way to, that works for us, but you can always adjust it later. This is a hollow design. This doesn't actually flex. This stays pretty stiff. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, get the old one off and see about putting this in. All right, so you can see our iBox springs. These things are still doing me strong. These are the ones for the FK7. I love the drop, I'm super happy with it. They now have one out that's specific to the Integra. It's not as, as aggressive as a drop, but I still love it. Everything works great. So the sway bar is real simple. Here's the factory one. Here's where the link goes onto our um, lower control arm, and here's where it mounts. So we're just gonna start by removing this part and then taking the sway bar off the body. Should be pretty simple. All right, so now we have both the sway bars next to each other. You can see they're two totally different designs. This one's a solid sway bar. This is a hollow sway bar. They both transfer force totally differently. Um, this one's gonna definitely give us a lot more stiffness in the rear end. And that's what I'm happy about. So let's go ahead and start by putting the new rubbers on and the brackets onto the sway bar and then getting it up in the car.
the sway bar is all done, so now we're going to move on to the interior. Um, we're going to change out. I have this K-Tune Lagmara um, shift knob. I had it on my DA. It's nice. I like the feel of it. I like the height of it, but it's not weighted, and it makes for a little bit weird of a throw. I also have the Integra Type S shift knob, but I had another shift knob that I was saving for my NSX, and I'm going to put it on here. Um, that is a NSX uh, Type S or a US spec Zanardi edition shift knob, and that's weighted properly. It has the teardrop shape. So I think I'm gonna give that a try and see what I how I like it. If not, we'll switch back to the NSX Type S shift knob. But first, we're gonna go ahead and change the steering wheel to the Type S steering wheel. Super simple. We pop out the airbag, and then we move on to removing the steering wheel. All right, so here is my A-Spec steering wheel. You can see it's leather with offset red stitching. It has really nice shape to it, handles great. Now, the Integra Type S steering wheel is the same design, but with the perforated leather, the same offset stitching, and this is gonna allow for a little bit better grip, neater feel, and I just wanna put it on there because there's something about swapping parts from one model Honda to another that is satisfying. If you've had Hondas, then you kind of get the idea. It's like taking S2000 seats and putting them in your Civic, something similar. So we're gonna go ahead and swap over the controls to here, it should take no time at all. All right, so we got the steering wheel in, super happy. Nothing like a new steering wheel on the car. And we have the shift knob in. Feel is great, can't wait to dry it out. But next, it's the brakes and then some service under the hood. All right, so we wrapped up the interior. Now it's to get down to the brakes. So as you saw in one of our other videos, we did the uh, Brembo brake upgrade from the Hyundai Genesis and rotors from a Nissan Rogue. Well, the people who shipped me the rotors, there was a subsection of a submodel, and I didn't get the right rotors. That's why they kind of look a little bit small on the car. Now, doing more research, I was finally able to find the correct size rotors. They're almost an inch larger than the ones I have on there. So we're gonna go ahead and change out the rotors. And since the pad was wearing uneven, we're gonna put a new set of pads on it here. These are the Hawks uh, 5.0. This is a good all around pad. I've always had good luck with these. Um, very nice pad. And um, we're gonna go ahead and update the fluid in the car, flush out what we have, put some new 660 mold tool in there. And the uh, rotors, I went a little bit up on it to the EVCs. These are more of a performance rotor over the stop, uh, power stops that I have on there now. So that's gonna be our next mission. So let's get these things swapped out, get the new stuff on it.
All right, so we got the pads out and here you can see, this is where the rotor stopped and I was missing all this space, contact area. Now, not only am I not utilizing the brakes right, but this is causing a high pitch squeal because it's running on the edge of the rotor. So it's like a tuning fork when I go to stop. So this is gonna solve a couple issues and definitely a very necessary upgrade. So here's the new rotor, here's the old rotor, and like you can see from our brake pad gap, this is almost the same exact amount that it was missing. So pretty, I think it's pretty significant. It was always bothering me, and the biggest thing is, is it's not running past the rotor and causing that high frequency squeal. So let's go ahead and slap this one on. It tells us what side it goes on. Every rotor is a little bit different. This one's the left, and we're on the left. All right, so we got the new rotors and pads in. So now we're gonna just swap the fluid out. This fluid's only about a year old. We did it right before the Dragon last year. But just to make sure we don't boil it or anything like that, I'm gonna swap it out. Um, so what we'll start by doing first is we'll go ahead and suck the reservoir dry up here. And then we'll go ahead and flush the fluid out through all four corners.
All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and put some fresh rubber on the front. Um, as you can see, they're worn out pretty good. I'm almost pretty much to the wear bars. That indicator means it's losing its ability to displace water properly. So that makes it a little bit more dangerous. So I picked up a new set of 245-4018, um, the Azena RT 615K Pluses. These are really good. I really like the feel of them. They are noisier with road noise, but the performance out of them is awesome. They're reinforced sidewall. They're extra stiff for a little bit more spirited driving, and they are 200 tread wear. So they're going to be, they're going to wear quick. These ones wore out pretty quick for me. But before the trip, I'm going to throw two new ones on the front, and then it might be time to take the wheels off the car for a little while after that and try out maybe some of the other three wheels that we have for it. But either way, this is the next step. New tires, new fluids, sway bar, everything. This car is ready for the Dragon. It's ready for that 3,000 mile round trip of driving for a week solid. And uh, the next car, I think is a real treat. It's one of my favorites, special kind of car to me. I know you guys are gonna enjoy it. All right, so we got my car ready for the trip. Now we have my life partner, David. <laughs> This is my good buddy. This is a car that we've been working on at home in the garage for almost a year and a half now. And it is a real SIR um, 92 Civic hatchback. And this is not original paint, but it is an originally Captiva blue car. Um, it's very nice setup and it came as a shell. Came with some interior, but not all the interior. So we've gone through a lot of different things such as getting the right seats for the car, um, getting all the proper interior for the back here. It has the gather speakers in the back. And um, you can see it's got a lot of nice little accessories in there that fill in the JDM niche for the car that it is. And on the outside, you can see it has Type R5 lug, you know, and these really cute white wheels on it. I think they, they're nice, they're 15s. They're very, they're very cute. But my favorite part about this car and my least favorite part about this car is what's under the hood because you know an sir should probably have some kind of b-series motor but this guy he wanted to cheat and be fast so he went ahead with the k-series motor um it's an american rsx swap with an lsd in it an rbc manifold rdx injectors and some head work on it what kind of we're running a drag cartel 2.2 cams on it yes yeah. and we had a local shop do up the AC system, um, made custom lines for us. Uh, you can see they, they made everything work. Some custom lines here. We tried to kind of keep them tucked in, but still keep some things in their original location. So pretty cool car. It, the idea of this is functionality and be able to beat on it. And right now we're gonna do some of our prep on it, stuff we couldn't do in the garage. Um, 
We could, but we want to do it here too. We're gonna, we have some new coilovers to put in it. We have the, it has a traction bar, but it doesn't have the arms on it yet. So we still got to put those in. We're gonna swap out the brake fluid because when the system got bled out, it just has standard brake fluid in it. So we're gonna put some 660. Yes, Motul 660. Mot Motul 660. And we're also gonna put a front lip on it because it had one, but it, 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 something ejected, happened. it ejected off Did the car. Can you tell us a story? You should buy OEM clips and um, not use plastic clips and nuts and bolts. Yeah, there you go. That's so. on the money. And then we also are swapping out the control arms. So we have a little bit more clearance with the Skunk 2 ones. They're old arms, but we bought new Pro Series ball joints for it. So we're going to swap these out, adjust everything, install everything, maybe put these things on there. They won't last long. They'll get worn down i'm sure about that but this is our prep this isn't a diy we're going to show you us just getting it done so follow along and tell us what you think All right, so what we have here are replacement uh, Skunk 2 Pro Series ball joints. Uh, we're just gonna throw new ones in. These were a little rusty, but the boots were still all intact. A little bit, nah, not even bad dry run. Just for safety, we're gonna go ahead and throw these in. Comes with the new nut, super easy to do. The reason we're going with these is it gives us a little bit more clearance on the top as compared to the hard race. Uh, it just has a little bit bigger spot here. So that is gonna be a simple fix. All right, so this is what we took out. These are the Tane Flex Z's. Tane. Tane Flex Z's. They're not Teen, they're Sorry. Tane. We had this conversation before. It's very important to say things the right way. But either way, <laughs> so here you got, these are your new ones here. And what's the difference between this? What series is this? This is gonna be the BS model from the BC Coal Racing. And I know we've put DRs on them BR. before. BRs. BR, BR. And then what, this is a DS. Yes. So what's the difference? So it's a it's an upgraded version of the BR, and it um, has more compression for the piston. On so the shock. I guess it's it's a different shock setup, and it, it says it has progressive uh, dampening on it. So this is supposed to be a step above. Correct. Yeah, I believe the spring rates are all the same, but um, it's pretty much a nice upgrade. The only reason these are good, these are loose, but they're good. But the issue that we have with these is they're just they're more street and not as much track. And we want to have a little bit more track feel out of this. And this is a better setup for what David wants. So that's why we're switching it out. That and he has too much money and he wants to buy stuff for no reason. So that's always a good thing too. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, thank you.
so we have the suspension installed, new control arms, the new coilovers. We still have to adjust it, but before we put the wheels back on, we're gonna go ahead and swap out the fluid that's in there. It has regular DOT3 Acura fluid in it, and we're gonna throw the Motul 660. I don't think David can drive it hard enough to really take advantage of that, but we're gonna do it anyways in case I get behind the wheel because I don't wanna have any trouble. Very nice. Get on the right side. You see them pedals? Oh yeah. All right, so we got everything dialed in. Our height is set. Now we're gonna bring it over to the alignment line, rack, bleh, bleh, over to the alignment rack, and then get everything set up there. All right, so suspension is done, alignment's done, mud flaps on, traction bars on, brake fluid's changed. I think this thing is dragon spec. What do you think, David? I think she's ready to attack the dragon and have some fun at uh, Classic Honda's on the Dragon this year. But that's not it. We have another car to get done. Actually, we got another two to get done. So let's wait for the next one. All right, guys, so we are all done with David's right-hand drive EG6 Honda Civic hatchback. Next up, we have Another right-hand drive legend right behind me, right over here, 1996 Honda Integra Type R DBA, a four-door sedan, guys. Not a two-door, but a four-door. It's pretty weird. Now, take a look at these wheels right over here. Racing Heart C2 wheels. Definitely one of my favorite wheels from back in the day. Could never afford them. And take a look at the condition. Look how good they look. And obviously, as you can see, the exterior finish in these beautiful, legendary championship right now we have a few things on the list now the first thing we're going to take care of is the oil leaks now take a look at right over here looks like someone put a 
brand new valve cover on it, but didn't put a new gasket set or put Honda Bond in the corner, causing a pretty big leak in the engine right over here. Shouldn't be a big problem. What we have here, we do have a factory gasket set here. So again, we're gonna seal up the oil leaks first and we move on to our next item. And we have a valve cover here upside down. And as I expected, there was no Honda bond in all of these corners. Take a look at that. That's what caused the major oil leaks and put the gasket up pretty hard already. Not sure if they are OEM. Now take a look at the grommet right over here too. It looks like an aftermarket grommet. The good thing is we have the factory kits, which comes with the spark plug seal, the valve cover gasket, and all of these brand new grommets. So let's go ahead and get everything swapped out. And then we can move on to the next item.
All right, so we're at the next step on this. They called me in because I'm the specialist on this because TJ couldn't swing it no more. Yeah, I'm an RV specialist. Yeah, now he likes Nissans, he's a trader. But what we have here is we have hard race replacement mounts for this. The uh, rear mount is broken on the car. So we're gonna go ahead and change them all out. Hard race uses the same factory design, but with a stronger urethane rubber in it. And I believe this one, it comes um, hydraulically filled on the car factory. This one's solid. So this will transfer more vibration into the car, but it'll also give you that feel of a solid mount, but a little bit less. So this is a good happy medium between solid mounts and stock mounts. And it's a complete kit, it comes with the um, mounts for the AC compressor and transmission. And if you've seen the AC compressor mounts, normally they're not really a mount, it's like a vibration dampener, it's like skinny little rubbers. This one's solid like the transmission. So this is actually gonna give the car some pretty good feel from the mounts. Only problem is getting that back one out of the car, it's not so easy. And this is stock and it has almost all the stock brackets and clips and everything. So we're gonna go at it and see what it takes to get it out. What do you think, TJ? I don't need no help. I'm just here for support. <laughs> <laughs> Completely busted. So uh, you can already see that this mount's already busted, so that's going to be a big improvement. That if with the, all the mounts broken and old the way they are, hey, look at this one. The motor is going to sag, and it's not going to sit in its proper location. So your axle angles are going to be weird, and just nothing's where it needs to be so and when i pulled this car in the other day i felt like when i went to let the clutch out you could feel the engine flex and then it would start to go so this is definitely necessary definitely necessary to get it up to dragon spec i don't know if nam's going to drive this car the way it's supposed to be on the mountain but you know i can always take it over for him and give it a run you never know tj won't be there because he drives a nissan no the, the dragon's not ready for me i i can slay the dragon So I don't know what engine air filter this is, but it actually looks really, really cool. It is made in Japan, right? Yeah, it says it right here. Oh. But regards to the fact we got ourselves a uh, new engine air filter, which is right over here, made by the TJ Little Hand. <laughs> <laughs> Spoon Sport. Huh, I don't know. Drop a comment below which filter do you like better. Hmm, I don't know. I kind of lean toward this one over here. <laughs> it's shiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get the spoon unit back in here.
All right, guys, so we got everything else buttoned up under the engine bay nix up. We go ahead and work on our brake system now. The front and rear brakes are completely fine. The only thing we are going to change are the stainless steel brake line from Russell, and also we're going to flush our entire system with this Motor 660.4 fluid. All right, guys, so we got all the stainless steel brake lines installed and also black the entire system. Next up, we want to go ahead and replace our shifter with a hybrid unit. Now, before we do that, we need to remove the stock one and also take a look at back here. Uh, the rear bumper have some imperfection. Uh, Brian had removed the bumper and took it to the body shop to get that refinished. In the meantime, while we're working some of the mechanical items.
<laughs> a dual band shifter, huh, TJ? Uh, old school. Only Type I with dual band, right? EM1 don't have that. Uh, GSR had a dual band. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Look at that. And I know JDM shifter come in this like zinc, yeah, but... bronze finish. Pretty nice. All right, so, so what's next, TJ? Do we use any of this stuff here? No, um, Hybrid Racing has a whole assembly we're just gonna put right in. If we want, <clears throat> they do have a third hole because there's only two here. We can opt to drill the third hole to make it a little bit more rigid, I guess, when you're, if you're okay. power shifting or something, you know? Ooh, power shift, I like that. Yeah, you know, might as well do it if it, if it comes with it. Give me three of these, that's what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, three and three. So what we gotta do is take this and we're gonna set this in our shifter here. That, boom. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. So, so we're gonna set a punch it. Is, what I do is I put these in, right? And then... Position it. Yeah, just however we want it like that. And then we get a marker or set a punch. punch. Yep. Very nice. This is a two-piece design, huh? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Slide right through. It's a lot easier. Turn that. Yeah, there you go. There it goes. There you go. Slide this back through. I'm too busy with the shifter right now, bro. <laughs> Feels so nice. All right, guys, so we got the heart race engine mounts in place and also the brand new hybrid shifter assembly right up here. It feels super, super nice. Now, next up, we're going to move on to the next item. We're going to work on the suspension and we're going to start from back here with the rear trailing arm bushing. As you can see, nice and deteriorated and it's all cracked up. So the thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the entire trailing arm and get that bushing pressed out. It's gonna make our life much, much easier. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and soak it up with some penetrating oil, then go ahead and remove all the items that attach to the training arm.
money. Go, go around. Wait, wait, wait. Right there, like so. Alright, so what we have here are the hard race type R rear lower control arm control arms and what they already have their bushings pressed into them. This is a tough arm to press because it's not solid. So when you try and press or change the bushings on these, sometimes you can deform it, bend it, and it just doesn't work out right. Hard Race already went through the effort of doing it for you, and it's nice and painted and looks good. It's a lot easier. I definitely would go this route instead of doing it on my own. But there we go, let's put them in. All right, so now we've wrapped up in the rear and we're moving to some stuff we need to fix up in the front. So this is our stock compliance bushing and front lower control arm. And you can see the bushings are beat up inside here. And we're gonna go ahead and refresh those with the uh, hard race again, makes another OEM replacement with their upgraded bushings pressed into it. And they also have a nice rear compliance, or front compliance bushing, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and swap over this part onto here and put a new compliance bushing and then get everything put in the car. It's super convenient that they sell this already pressed. It's worth the extra expense that you don't have to pay someone to press the stuff in. So let's get going. All right, guys, so we pretty much got almost everything finished up on the Integra. We have a four wheel alignment, and then we're gonna show you guys our brand new headlight setup. Now, before we do that, we went ahead off camera and we finished both headlights. Brian from Paint Society did a really good job. We're finishing 
this factory OEM headlights and also the rear bumper. Imagine that beautiful championship white paint. Now, before we finish up here, like I mentioned, let's go ahead and get the car on the alignment lift so we can finish this up and move on to the next car. And here we have the reading for the rear of the vehicle, negative 1.5 on the driver's side and negative 1.6 on the passenger. Both of them are still within factory specs. We got negative toe on the left rear and then positive toe on the right rear. So we go ahead and make the adjustment now and then once we all done, we move our way to the front. All right, so Mike just got done doing the alignment and the last step to get this car dragon spec ready for us to go up there and be beat it up on the mountain, we need to be able to see. So this car had halogen bulbs in it, which we all know these, they're yellow. They don't really shine that great. They get the job done, kind of, but we're gonna be upgrading to an LED bulb. And it's not just any LED bulb, it's from C-Light and uh, this is one of their new models. It's the S2S model. And the neat thing about this model is if you compare it to the factory one or the original spec, it's pretty much the same exact dimensions. And it still has a cooling fan in it built into it instead of those big heat sinks you'll see on other LEDs, kind of like this. So you can see the comparison between a standard LED and the new Sea Light S2S model. So this has like a 14,000 RPM fan built into the back of it, copper heat sinks, 50,000 hours of burn time, and a 6,500K cool blue light to it. These things are pretty awesome. They have um, a bunch of extra O-rings and screws for mounting it on here in case you lose it or you need to redo something or you pinch this O-ring. So they're, they're really awesome. We're gonna put them in the car and we're gonna see how everything works out. Um, I think you'll be really happy with it. On top of that, we just had Brian go ahead and refinish the headlights on it. Um, he sanded them down and put a new coat of clear. They're not perfect. They're original from, what's this, 96, Mike? 96. 96. So they have some cracking in it, but they look a thousand times better than they did. But we're gonna show you how easy it is to put these in and what a different it make, difference it makes over the halogen. All right, so as you can see, this is the standard halogen bulb. This is our Sea Light S2S bulb, and you can obviously tell the difference on it. It's much brighter, it, especially in this projector setup. It looks really good. It gives us a really clear cutoff line too with the way it projects. And the nice thing about these bulbs, I'm gonna show you when I go ahead to install it, is that some LEDs have a polarity where you need to have your power on one side and ground on the other. This is plug and play, you can't mess it up. You install it just like a factory bulb. And we're gonna go ahead and install this one with you and show you how exactly it's done.
All right, well, they look really good to me. Um, what we're gonna do now is kill all the lights in the shop, bring it over into the other part of the shop, and we're gonna show you how it looks at night. So as you can see, this is very good. It's like HID quality from the LED without all the extra ballast and all the other junk that goes along with it. I think these are a great upgrade. You can see the line. It's a nice solid cut off on it. It's not shining all over the place. I, it speaks for itself. This is gonna be perfect for the mountain and I know the owner is gonna love it. All right, you can see it lights the road up a hundred times better than it used to with the stocks. Man, it's weird being on the left side of the car. <laughs> This thing uh, is definitely nice. Mike, you gonna send it a little bit? Uh, I give it a little bit. You give it a little VTEC? Uh, let me see. Let me see. I think it's got VTEC fluid. Type R! All right, so here we have Danny's AP2 S2000. This is Mr. Danny right here cleaning up his ex soon to be new exhaust on the car. You're doing a great job. Just want Couldn't you to know that. You. So when did you get this car? So you haven't taken it to the Tail of Dragon yet. I right? haven't, I haven't. But last year, I took that really weird Type R uh, prototype. Oh, the Scubaru. The Scubaru Type R yeah, prototype. Yeah, yeah. And this really weird shaped Civic Type R. Um, Went to, you know, classic uh, Hondas and Dragon, and, you know, this is a dream car of mine. I've always wanted one since high school. I was in the right opportunity to get one, so looked and looked and looked. Didn't take too long to find a pretty good example of one, and I picked it up. You got this up near Daytona, right? Near Daytona, yeah. right by Bucky's. Oh. The famous Bucky's. <laughs> Brisket uh, and beef jerky, that's all I know. That's the best thing ever. Yeah. But I snagged it, and, you know, Putting a little mods here and there, you know, nothing too crazy. I see you have RPF ones now. Um, is that what your plan is to keep on here? I don't know. Maybe you might find out soon enough. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over and get the wheels and tires done, and you can see what he chose to go with. And then we'll start getting all this dragon prep done for it. And that way we can go up to the mountains and have fun with this car too. All right, so you guys already got to look at Danny's car. And now we're moving on to the next step is his wheels. Um, we got some new tires here. Um, this is his old setup. It was a 17 by nine uh, square offset with two 45 40s. But now we're gonna transfer these two tires over to the staggered Rigamaster setup. And these are 17 by eight plus 35. And then I believe it's 17 by nine. Uh, what's our offset here? 42 for the rear. Um, they're beautiful wheels, they're brand new. Let's take a look at them. Oh yeah, the white boys. Can't go wrong with the Rigger Master.
All right, so now you guys saw the wheels and tires, some beautiful Rigor Masters. And on top of that, we have the blue stickers on them. And we got them ceramic coated by our good buddy, uh, what, what's his thing? You got Ceramic Auto Works, thank you, Brent. Yes, Ceramic Auto Works. He does really good work. And he got it all done up because white wheels without ceramic coating is kind of a nightmare. Um, you want to be able to at least maybe hit it with a hose when we're on this trip instead and of having to get in there and try and clean it out. Slide everything right off. And here is the uh, Tomei exhaust. It is a full titanium exhaust. It uh, weighs nothing. It's a little crazy. <laughs> you can see right there all the insignia on it. What do you think it weighs, honestly? Um, ten? Maybe eight, nine pounds. It's very, very light. I'm going to say probably ten. Yeah. Well, you have no idea what you're talking about, but that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so this one's going to be an easy install. There were a couple of these springs on it that hold together, but it also has a clamp. We're going to order some new springs later for it because a couple of them broke off. But either way, it doesn't flex anywhere, so I don't even know if they're really necessary. This is uh, going to go to a stock cat and header. So hopefully it keeps the noise reasonable and drone on the highway. I know titaniums are a little bit louder the way they resonate, but this will be some real quick, easy maintenance. And we also, like I was saying, we have our oil change here. We're using 1030 Honda Synthetic Blend. We have the S2000 filter and we have some MTF. We're also gonna do a rear diff service on here. We have that in bulk and a big pump, so I don't have a bottle of it. And then we also have some rear diff spacers that this man didn't bring out for us to show in the video, but I guess you'll see it when we go to put them in. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go over some of the stuff that Danny's done to the car already. Just not for this trip in general, just getting the car ready to do some aggressive driving. I think you took it for a track event we earlier did this year. We did a track event at the firm. It was really fun. So um, what did you change and upgrade over the way you got the car? So initially we had stock suspension, stock brakes. I went with the Olins, uh, got it from a really good friend, Josh Gibbs. What are these DFV models? Yep. Very nice, um, slightly used but they were used properly. Uh, proper. It's uh, upgraded sway bar on here? Upgraded sway bar, a little bit thicker up front, so you can have a, get rid of that little bit of that snap over steer. And we have some good ridge steel braided lines. Yes, I think sir. you upgraded the brake fluid as well. That brake fluid, we went to the Moto 660 and we went drilled slotted front rotors and Did you we upgraded the 5.8 Hawk pads. Oh, those are the same ones I have in my Integra. Yeah, that's a really good combination that, I mean, this is a streetable combination. It's streetable, all this, it's not full track. It gives you that nice balance in between. That's what I think he's trying to keep. This isn't a track car. He wants to be able to drive it around and then go beat on it. So we're gonna start in the back by installing these uh, rear axle spacers. And this helps, I think, correct the geometry yes, sir. in the rear end when you lower it. So that way the axles are in their proper orientation. So it's a pretty simple thing and it's a must when you lower these cars.
All right. All we have was the right front toe out on the car. Everything is perfect to spec. We set it to CR alignment specs. I don't really think it's gonna change much because Danny's not that good of a driver to notice the difference. But, you know, oh, hi, Danny. Hey, so uh, do you know why it was out of spec a little bit? I don't know. I heard he was doing some aggressive driving on the firm up near Jacksonville, and he may have had a little rally-inspired um, outing. A little oopsie-daisy. Oopsie-daisy. But now everything's two spec. It's dragon spec. Dragon spec. Oh, yeah, there you go. I like that. Ready to go. And uh, let's get this trip on the road. This is the last car we got to get ready, so let's get it. Stay tuned for the AAC news. All right, guys, so with Denny Hanna S2000 out of the way, we got every single vehicle ready for the upcoming Classic Hanna on the Dragon event, October 7th and 8th. And on the next video, we'll take you guys to the entire journey with us, and we'll be picking up a special car from Hanna Corporate. Want to find out what it is? You guys go ahead and stay tuned for next week, and we're going to wrap today's video up. My name is Mike. On behalf of AC Garage, thanks again for watching. We hope to see all of you again next week.